Welcome everyone to the house of the Lord. It's a good thing to be in his house, to be with your family. Let's go ahead and stand on up. And once you're st stood up, I want you to ask your neighbor next to you one good thing that God has done for you this week. And then when you're done with that, we are going to start in with worship. All right? Think of one thing that God's done for you that you are grateful for. All right? You're alive today. You could be grateful you have air in your lungs. You were able to get to church. You have grateful you've got a car. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. He's so faithful. We are so blessed beyond measure. <laughs> okay, Ray, we're going to go ahead and get started. <coughs> okay, we're going to worship. King of my heart, be the 
my heart be the wind inside my sails the anchor in the waves oh he is my song let the king of my heart be the fire inside my veins the echo of my days oh he is my song you are good good focused on seeing him for the first time and I as I was learning this song behold him behold him Hosanna Hosanna I am just envisioning that when I breathe my last breath on this earth that I am going to be so excited to see my Jesus for the first time and I cannot keep from saying behold you behold you Hosanna you are worthy to be praised so as we sing this song I want you to sing it with all of your heart and I want you to be looking for him because he is here amongst us and he wants to hear your voice your worship your heart so let's just let's worship him with this new song is the word here in the flesh living among the meek and the holy the voice of God his very breath salvation of the world unfolding behold Upon the cross and 
from his wounds his mercy flowing now the dawn put death to death and ever since that grave's been empty behold him behold behold him behold him lift up your eyes see the sun Yeah. 
focused on him right now. If our ushers can come forward, we want to go ahead and uh, pass out the bread and the vine here. And we're going to... I found that interesting that uh, they sang some songs there. That I didn't know what they're going to sing and they didn't know what I was going to talk about, about communion, but it goes right into that one song. It was really good. And, you know, I can't help but think that as we were worshiping the Lord here that, that God can just kind of take this lid off of heaven and allow the praises of the saints to go up and go and, and the people that have preceded us are hearing us sing. You know, they're hearing the worship. It's like incense going up to heaven. And it's like they were the church, you know, uh, a thousand or two thousand years ago or just yesterday. And now they're in heaven. They're rejoicing and worshiping with God and we're worshiping with them. And, and I, I really believe that God's allowing our praises to come up, and they're actually hearing our praise. Now, this may sound crazy. I don't even think anything biblical to back that up, but I do believe that. I believe they can hear our, our incense as praise going up there to heaven. And uh, they're rejoicing with us. And, and what a day that will be. Amen. You hit it. <laughs> I love it. A reunion. We're going to have a reunion one day. And some of the loss that we've had to face this past year and the past couple of years, we're going to see our loved ones again. We are. Because that's, that's why we're here in church, because we believe not only in a resurrection of Jesus Christ, but we believe in a resurrection of the saints of the body of Christ. We're going to join him one day. We're going to see where there's going to be a great reunion one day. It's going to be wonderful. And you know, Jesus and the, and the Lord's Supper, you know, we, we celebrate this, the Lord's Supper. There are three suppers that are described in the Bible. It's the Passover, which took place for 1,500 years. There's the Lord's Supper. And then there's the marriage supper of the Lamb. And three suppers. And Jesus said in Revelation 3.20, it says, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. And if any man will hear my voice and open up the door to me, I will come in and I will sup with him. Now he's talking to the church of Laodicea, but that also can apply to the person out there that says, you know, I don't know God, or I really don't know God, or I really don't know, but I would really like to know God. Well, if you will hear his voice and you will open up the door of your heart to him, he will come in and he will sup with you. He will come in. And that's what's happening today. And you know, the scriptures speak of three suppers. And for 1,500 years, the nation of Israel uh, celebrated the Passover. And it was a time of remembrance of when the Lord delivered them from Egypt. And they would take uh, the original Passover, they would take a Passover lamb, and they would slay it, and they would take the meat, and they would cook it, and they would partake of it. And they had unleavened bread and, and bitter herbs. But they would take the blood of the lamb, and they would put it on the doorpost, and it was like here and here and here. And it almost represented the, the wounds that he, that he suffered for us. And his blood shed. I'm sorry, it means so much to me. But what I talk about, even at home, I partake of communion at home, and I weep before him because he forgave me of my sins. My sins are horrible, every one of us. But Jesus has taken, he died on the cross that he could take and wash away all my sins, not just cover them, that every sin that I ever committed has been washed away. And what, is, what qualifies me that one day when I go into a reunion in heaven and I see him and I behold his face, what is the one thing that's going to qualify me? 
It's going to be, what, how, do you, how dare you stand here? How can you stand here? And say an angel says, what, by, by how do you enter the gates of heaven? I will say, by the blood of Jesus. By the blood of the Lamb of God. I come in boldly before the throne room of God. And even today, and even in the spirit, I can come into the throne room of God by the blood of the Lamb of Jesus Christ. And if you've never experienced that before, you can experience it. All you have to do, it's available. It's free to anybody that wants it. And all you have to do is ask for it because he is knocking on the door of your heart. And he's saying, let me in. Let me in. I want to come in. I want to sup with you. I want to have fellowship with you. I want to have communion with you. I want to reveal myself to you in a very powerful way. And God will do that. So we see that there's the Passover supper. We see the Lord's supper, and it was, it was on earth, and Jesus himself became the Passover lamb. The Passover pointed to the lamb of God. And Jesus came, and he did this. And then we have the marriage supper of the lamb. And John, it says in the book of Re Revelation, blessed are those who are called to the marriage supper of the lamb. What a reunion that's going to be. What a day of rejoicing that's going to be when we have that. And so the Passover pointed to the Lord's Supper. And this was for the Lord. The Lord's Supper pointed to the Passover Supper, looking backwards. And yet this right here, we were, what we are partaking of right now, points to the future that we have, the marriage supper of the Lamb, that he is preparing for us, where the groom meets the bride, and there's a marriage in heaven. I want to be a part of that. We are the bride of Christ right here. We're sitting. And, you know, by faith, we're saying, you know, I'm going to be there. I'm going to be there. And so what we take here, and I'm going to need a cup up here, if I could have one, please. And so this is so important. This is not, not to be taken uh, with, with trivia here. This is so important here. We do this in not only remembrance of him, but we do it as saying, you know, Lord, I'm going to stand before you. And I appreciate these people that were coming down to bow before him and worship before his throne because I can't wait to see him face to face. And, I, you know, what, what an overwhelming uh, sense that's going to take place. I'll be on my face saying, I'm not worthy, worthy to be here, and I'm not. But he made me worthy because he is worthy. He's the sinless lamb of God. And we can partake of his body right here. And we partake of eternal life with him. Amen. Let's partake today. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. We worship you. Man, God's good. Let's partake of the vine. What a Christ. Thank you, Lord. Can you think of just one good thing that you can tell him right now? Maybe in your heart, maybe you just want to, you, and you want to voice it, maybe you want to do that. Give him thanksgiving right now. Tell him thank you for, maybe he forgave you. Maybe he gets you, puts you back on the right track. You can look back in the past of something that, yeah, God did this for me. God did this for me, a very, very special event. It was something that took place. God brought my, my wife home this week. Praise God, you know. It's good. Yeah, good. I got my pianist back. Yeah, I got my worshiper back. I got my wife back. It's awesome. You know, we're so grateful for him. We're so grateful for everything that he has done to us. Praise his name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, God. Thank you for so much, Lord Jesus, for everything you've given us and done for us. I just like to take a moment. I don't like to get in a rush. I... I, uh, this is his house. This is his presence. This is his time. Um, I mean, I could go to announcements for right now, but I'm also I'm just basking in his presence. I, I just sense like, you know, let's take a moment just to say thank you, Lord. You mean everything to us, Lord Jesus. You are real, Lord. You are the way, the truth, and the life. You are the true vine, O oh Lord. You are the great shepherd. Oh, Lord, we give our hearts to you. We give our lives to you. We long for thee, O oh Lord. We long for thee, O oh Lord. We thank you, God. We thank you, Lord. We praise you. Amen. Amen. We thank you, Lord. We do have to go ahead and transition a little bit here, and we're going to give just a few announcements here. Next Sunday um, is going to be a special time of a leadership meeting time. 
and I'm asking those who uh, are part of leadership in any capacity here that you will be here after church. We're going to supply lunch for you. We're going to have a, just a leadership meeting. It'll be a few hours, and, and if you count yourself as a leader here, or you desire to be a leader in some way, shape, or form, you'd say, well, I, deep down in my heart, I'd like to be a leader, but you know, I, um, I'm not worried to be one, or I, you know, I, I feel it down in here, but you know, you know I, there's no way I could be a leader. Well, listen, that's putting the cart before the horse. See, God calls, he qualifies the called, okay? You say, well, I'm unqualified. That's okay, he's qualified, and he can qualify you. Just come by faith. You say, well, I'm not ready for that. Yes, you are ready for that. He says you're ready, so come on out. And if you say you want to just be a helpful in the church, I just want to do this, or I want to be a leader in any type of way, shape, or form, just, uh, just be here. We'll, uh, we'll supply lunch. We'll have a good time together, and we want to get some uh, what we expect in the house of the Lord here as far as leadership is concerned and where we're going and how things are going to look and, and so forth like that. So I hope that you'll come and you say, well, I'm too young for that. No, you're not. You're perfect. I'm too old for that. No, you're not. You're perfect. Come on out. You know, uh, we'd love to have you. And, and, and so uh, if all of you show up, let me know because I'll have to have a lunch, you know, because that, that would really delight my heart. And I believe it would delight the heart of God. You say, you know, that uh, the more people that show up for that, the, the better. But we will uh, we'll have that supplied for you. Hey, Crystal, you have some announcements that we need to uh, go to here, and we'll go ahead and let you do that. Yeah, I have three announcements, but the first one is we are going to send five young ladies to the youth camp this year. It's going to be the end of the month. Yep. Yeah. Give my hand clap. It's going to be the end of the month, and I want to thank everybody who donated. We were able to fully fund four of those five. Mm -hmm. So you know who you are. Thank you for making this uh, able for the girls to thank go. Thank you. Yes. And, um, then also I wanted to say we have an upcoming missions trip, and I'm giving you guys advance notice now because I might be gone for two weekends um, between this time and, and the time the missions trip starts. It's going to be July 8th through the 11th. That's Thursday through Sunday. We're driving up to the Farmington area. We're going to be visiting the Navajo Nation. We were going to have a citywide crusade, but we're not able to gather more than 50 so, um, in a tent. So we're actually going to do a pastors and leaders banquet. We're going to um, pray and provide a steak dinner and like minister to the Na Navajo pastors. There's going to supposed to be a hundred of them showing up, pastors and leaders. Wow. So it's going to be a big event and we're preparing for yeah. it now. If you want to be a part of this missions trip, please see me and uh, we'll make a place for you. We provide transportation. You're like fully taken care of. You can ask anybody who went last time. And this time we're going to be staying at a hotel. So <laughs> the Marriott. <laughs> so yeah. it's not going to be uh, uh, on the floors in the parsonage. Okay, so come see me about that. Also, I'm going to make a, a quick announcement. We are having a yard sale June 26th. Um, giving you advance notice for spring cleaning, summer cleaning, whatever it is. I don't want junk, okay? I want good stuff we can make a buck on, okay? So please see me. I will bring my ministry trailer here. We can put it in. Um, or I can come pick it up. If you can't bring it to me uh, here at the church on Sunday, I can pick it up, okay? Okay, we are... Um, and I didn't give Brianna any advance notice. This is for the Connor McCarthy Foundation. And it's a foundation to help families uh, that have a drug addict in their family. Brianna happens to be the president. Pastor started the foundation. And uh, it goes to benefit families in need that have drug abuse families. And so we're going to have a, uh, on that, a yard sale that day, a car wash, and a bake sale. Mm -hmm. So we'll need help. I think Joan's in the process of helping me with flyers and advertisements. So, and we, we're taking donations for mm -hmm. gift cards. And if you have donations you want to provide for the uh, missions trip too, I will take gift cards or financial donations or whatever God puts on your heart, okay? Yeah. Thank you, guys. Good. Thank you. Thank you, Crystal. Hey, we have the kids all come up. Come on, kids. Come on up. Here we go. Here they are. Come on. We're building back up. It's good. We have some new faces here, and I just want you to give your names 
What, what's your name? Come on, I know you. What's your name? Ruby. Ruby? Ruby. Eddie. Eddie. Kyle. Kyle. Okay. Alice. Alice. Peyton. Peyton. Come on. Raylan. Raylan. Haley. Haley. Connor. And Connor. We, oh, hey, we, we got some other kids up here. Yeah, thanks for coming up, kids. Erica and Cameron's children. What, what are their names? You want to just give your name? Jay. Hey. And your name? Elise. 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 That's beautiful. You have beautiful names. Everybody has a beautiful name. You know that God gave you your name? You know that? There's a special reason. And you're, a, you're special to God, and there's a special reason why you're here. And these, these young ladies in the back here, have been, they started out in... Uh, or young. They were like this when they started here. Now they, they just, they're still hanging with us, you know. They're still coming up here with us, and it's great to have them here. And uh, Jill started Project Friday, and, and uh, we had kids start to come, and we still have them. Yeah, we're going to start it up again. And kids, we just wanted you to know that we love you, and we honor you, and we just think you're so special, and we're so glad you're here. And Michael and Karen are going to teach you a lot when you go upstairs. But can we pray for you and bless you right now? Amen. All right, let's just stretch our hands. And Father, we bless these children. We are so grateful for them. Thank you that, God, that your hand is upon them, and we just send them forth with the blessing of the Lord. Let them learn from you this day. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, there you go. You can follow that guy right over there. All right, there you go. There you go. Yeah, all right. Yeah. It's <laughs> good. Excellent. Well, I might use some, my stool up here a little bit and maybe not a little bit. We'll see how it goes, how my knee feels. I'm still recovering from it. I did, I'm in physical therapy, and so I do it on a daily basis, and I, I may have overdid it yesterday or the day before because, man, my knee's feeling it right now. And uh, just one more thing, we do have a Next Steps uh, tonight. We will be meeting, meeting uh, tonight, Next Steps. This is your book, William, right here. And uh, uh, so we look forward to seeing you tonight if you can make it. That'll be at 5.30 tonight, 5.30. And uh, we have a really good time. That's been a foundational time. It's been very, very good. Uh, the book has been excellent. So there's, a, a, there's actually three different books for that. Uh, good. Everything is good. I, I hope I'm not missing anything on announcements or anything. We have a, we have a trailer, don't we? Yes, we have Friday night. We have a movie. Yes. And uh, we got a trailer that we want to go ahead and show with that, and we'll, so we'll do that. Pardon? Yeah, we'll see that. Maybe I'll get out of your way. We'll turn off the main lights up here. The mains. Keep the soffits on, and we'll turn off the mains. There we go. Good. <clears throat> Infamous star Gavin Stone became a fixture on the party scene. Dad, you in trouble? A little. What kind? The kind where you can't leave the state until you've completed your community service hours. Hey, do you know where the uh, pastor's office is? You're Gavin Stone. You recognize me. Should I? How'd you know my name? It was printed at the top of your rap sheet. I'm Alan Richardson, pastor. Ah. Uh, so, what is it exactly that I'll be doing? I've never acted before, but I'm willing to serve the Lord in whatever way you see fit. You know, as gifted as I am with a mop, I'm ten times better on stage. We ask that all cast members be Christians. I am one. I've had the passion of the Christ for a couple years now. Is that it? No. no. Hi, everybody. My name is Gavin Stone. I'm auditioning for the role of Jesus Christ. Superstar. Let's just dive right in. What if you drop a single spot on me? That is the exact opposite of what Jesus was about. Right. Don't you pick up on that when you read the Gospels? Well, yeah, you know, when I, when I read the Gospels, I pick up on that a little bit. Great first rehearsal. And I have some thoughts. Coffee, maybe? No, thanks. OK. Don't sweat it. She's just under a lot of stress, especially being a PK. Pastor's kid. She's Alan's daughter? Yeah. Hey. Sorry. Wow. I figured I might as well start diving into character. Nice. Blessings. Peace be to you. This is my body. Broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. 
I don't think he gets the story. But isn't this why we do what we do? Welcome to Cars for Single Moms. Here you go. Put that on. This is the best part. Why don't you come over there? No. Since you know who did it. Exactly. We don't want the credit. Hashtag words I've never said to my agent. Why do you care if I stay? Because you said you would. I was rude and selfish, and you guys gave me a second chance. This is what we do. I surrender. My way didn't work. I missed out on all of this. Into your hands, I commit my spirit. We I think he needs us as much as we need him. I don't know how this thing you have with God works exactly, but I like what it does. We really do believe in second chances here. Sounds good. I think I'm looking forward to that one. That starts at 6 o'clock in the sense we, we will be eating dinner at 6, and then at 7 o'clock we'll have the movie. And we do this once a month, the third uh, Friday of the month that we do do this. And so we've had some great times with this. It's been really, really good. And we've had some couple of heavy movies. And I thought, we'll play a little bit of a lighter one this time, you know. Invite yeah. And yeah, invite family and friends. Thank you. Yeah. So it's good. We're, uh, we're enjoying it. We had a great time a few weeks ago with, out there in the, the pit with the, the, barbecue, or the uh, fire pit and time of fellowship. We had barbecue. It was very, very, a lot of fun. And uh, so we're looking forward to that. So good. I want to say that I just want to commend you, church. I just want to say thank you. This is a, a wonderful, wonderful place to be. It's an honor for Jill and I to be here. We never dreamed that God would call us back into this area, you know, some uh, going on nine years now, and here we are. And, and I feel like, you know, I want another nine years for sure. And um, we are just so thrilled to be here and to serve here in any way possible that we can. And um, you have come alongside of us and, and brought support, and not only support, but ministry. And it's been an impact into this community, and I'm so grateful. We're making a, a community impact. You are, and you, you and believe the, the changes that have come in people's lives and, and uh, people that have come to God and people that have been ministered to. And uh, this is just a, a, this is like the tip of the iceberg right here you are and but to see what what's really going out there in that that community and i just want to say thank you and i commend you in the name of the lord for uh, serving god and being such a, a force in this community not only are we making a, a community impact but we're making a worldwide impact as well and you are affecting families and other nations believe it or not this place right here you are, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you so much. And I feel like that's what the Lord wants to say is thank you. Uh, and he wants to commend you for what you're doing, and um, it's just awesome. But praise God. If you can bow with me, we're going to go ahead and go to prayer here. Jill, I'm going to go ahead and give this to you, and we'll take that in. Get the way in there. And ask God's blessing on the word. Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you that it is such a joy to come to it. We pray that, God, that it'll have an impact on our lives, that God will not be the same, that, Lord, it'll just speak to us clearly, Lord, that it'll bring change within us, Lord. We pray that the word of God will go forth with a boldness, Lord, with an anointing, Lord. And we ask that our ears are open, Lord, that we hear what you want to say to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. And a couple of weeks ago, by the way, last week was a terrific time with Crystal. She spoke a great word. And and it's just impactful, and I get a lot of feedback from people that have been impacted with that. And thank you, Crystal, for being obedient to the Lord and, and what you delivered for us last week. A couple of weeks ago, I talked about David's triumphs and uh, uh, tragedies and what was going on and, uh, with, God, with David and, and his dealings. And David's, you know, he was, uh, he was backslidden. He had gone away from God, and, and uh, tragedy had come upon his life. And... He goes, man, I got to get things right. He had everything stolen from him, and they experienced great loss. And, and I feel like this past year, 2020, has been a time of victory, but also a time of loss for many people, losing uh, loved ones, losing uh, jobs, losing homes, losing a lot of things that have, that have taken place. And we've all been through some devastating times but I'm here to tell you that God is on the throne and that God is a God of restoration. And when David finally came to his senses and said, you know, came to the very end of himself, 
where his men were saying, you know, let's kill David. Let's get rid of him because he led us into this. Let's get rid of this guy. David turned to the Lord, and God gave him a promise. I'm going to restore everything to you, David. You've turned to me. You didn't turn to the right. You didn't turn to the left. You've turned to me. And I think that's an example of something here that, that's there. And David and God had promised him, I'm going to restore everything to you. I'm going to restore. Total restoration. We can recover what the enemy has taken. But I feel like, and I, and I sense this in my spirit, that coming out of this whole COVID time, and I, 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 it's, you know, businesses are starting to open up. The, the, you know, let's, we don't need a mask. and Many people are getting the, the vaccine and the shots and things like that. And things are starting to open up again with, with people like that. Is that there was such an intensity of what took place this past year. It's like, okay, I can take a breather. I can relax, you know. And, and we sometimes feel that way, and that's good. But at the same time, with that comes a relax in our spiritual life and our walk with God, in our intensity of serving the Lord and, and, and giving him everything as we well should uh, with that. And what I'm going to talk about is that where I believe we're entering into the days of that we are going to need, and what is required of us is going to be care, courage, character, and commitment all these things and we can't let our guard down when these things are coming in upon us but there's something here that I want to um, talk about in a normal part of human experience we face difficulties and we face obstacles we face headwinds that will come against us and sometimes there's winds of all kinds that come against us or or there's currents it's like we're on a boat and there are currents that want to sway us off and we got to keep track you know you've been on a boat or if you ever driven a boat or something like that and a, a current comes against you you've got to stay on course uh, and so maybe uh your marriage or your home is under attack right now you kind of let your guard down and things come into attack you might be facing physical conflict in your health and or entrenched in a fight over maybe finances and and so forth like that and you may be facing a a titanic spiritual battle that nobody really knows about and you've maybe shared with a few close friends man i'm going through some spiritual stuff right now and it's tough right now and and i need prayer and i and maybe you're going through things that you never thought you'd be facing and there are people who have gone through the very same experiences as you have there's nothing new under the sun i guarantee you somebody has gone through that before you but there are two types of people that I see. There are people that we all go through these things, and we all do. But there are people that get through it, and they get to the other side. And then there are people that come up, and they don't get to the other side. They, 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 they're cast off, or they end up in a shipwreck kind of a condition. They just do, and I'm just calling it as it is. Why is that? Why is there a connection with people that can go through it and come out on the other side, and there are people that they start off good, but they end up over on the bank over here in a shipwreck or a pile of rubble. Why is that? And I want to address that before I get into the courage and commitment and uh, the character here. What makes the difference? What's the connect or the disconnect? Is it because God um, has some special people and he doesn't care for others? He cares for this person, but he doesn't care for me. No, no. But you see, God shows no favoritism to anybody. He treats everybody the same. Now, we may have a response to God. He may respond different because of our response to him. You know, that sort of a thing that might be. But there are no, there are no favorites. God will treat everybody the same. Let me tell you something. God is the same. He doesn't change. And in Malachi, it says, I change not. I change not. He's always the same. His love is for everyone. His love is perfect. And he does want to get involved in our lives. That's important to him. God wants to get involved with our lives. But we have to allow him to. That's where Jesus said, hey, I, I'm, I'm knocking on the door of your heart. Are you going to let me in? Oh, I'm going to just close the door on you today, Jesus, because I want to go do my own thing, and I'm afraid you're going to tell me no. We do that, you know? And God says, come, let me on in. I'll give you in a good direction, and I'll give you a good way to go. 
And so his sovereignty is to love us. God is sovereign. He, he is, his love is sovereign. His love will be poured out. But on our part, and here's where the connection comes in, it's our responsibility to respond correctly to him. When I say respond correctly to him, I'm, I'm, I'm responding to the word of God. And that requires obedience on my part. I'm determined I'm going to obey the Lord. And I'm going to do it in correct, and, and I, I will do it correctly in what he wants in every way. So how do we respond correctly to him? What's the start of that? What does that look like to respond to God correctly? You know, it's like a child when we raise up our children. And Jill and I, we had four children. We taught them from an early age in life that this is the way it's done. And uh, this is the way to go and, and, and the way to do it. And, and uh, we brought correction into their life. And we have a loving Heavenly Father who will do the same thing or same way with us. And if he didn't love us, what kind of a parent would just let their child just go off and, and run out in the middle of a street? Yeah, a lazy parent, you know? What kind of a parent would allow their, their child to get hurt? And that's the way God is. And so he, he does not want us to get hurt. That's his motives. He's not a mean God. He's not a, a God who's out to get us. He's not a, a God that, that just wants to swing a big stick and knock us down. No, that's not the God we serve. He's much, much different than that. That's what the devil wants you to believe. So what's this connect and what's this disconnect? How can I connect with God in a correct way, in a right way? It starts off when James 1.22 it says this, be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. When we come to God and we are not doers of the word and we say we hear the word, but I don't do it, I deceive myself. You're in deception. Where the word is clear. And I, and I talk to people and in, this, in the past uh, year you might say I, I'm talking to people and they're going off into a lifestyle and I'll, I'll come to them as a loving pastor, and I'll confront them in love. And I'll say, come on over, man. Let's, uh, let's talk. And we'll, uh, what, what's happening? Where are you going? We're in life. And they're telling me, and I'm saying, you know, that's down a road to destruction. And what are you talking about? Well, let's open up the Bible. Let's open up the Word. I'll go show them. Here's what the Word here says. Here, and time and time and time and time again. And they'll say, oh, okay, well, I'll pray about it. And I go, man... There's nothing to pray about. It's already been said. You need to hear it, and you need to do it. Amen. And the persons that are doers get on the other side, and they survive, and they make it. The people that will hear it and don't do it end up shipwreck. True. And I'm saving you a lot of heartache. God wants to save you a lot of heartache. Amen. Amen. Now, there's an example of this, and it's the story of the preacher, of a preacher in an Old Testament church. His name is Ezekiel, and he's a prophet of the Lord. In Ezekiel 33, 30, and 32, it provides some pretty direct and challenging words from God. Now, think about this. Think about it. This is really cool, and I like how the New Living Translation presents it. It says, Son of man, son of man, your people talk about you in their houses and whisper about you in their doors. So they're talking about the preacher. They talk about you. I'm glad you don't talk about me. And if it's good, it isn't fried preacher, it's good preacher, okay? All right? They talk about you. They say to each other, come on, let's go hear the, the prophet tell us what the Lord is saying. Let's just go. Let's go, let's, it'll entertain us. Let's go, let, what is he going to tell us today? So my people, and God says my people, he's talking about his church here, his people, his ecclesia, the gathering, come pretending to be sincere and sit before you. So they're coming to the house of God, the synagogue, or the house of God, or the church, and they're pretending to be sincere. They listen to your words, but they have no intention of doing what you say. Their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. Interesting. 
You are very entertaining to them, like someone who sings love songs with a beautiful voice or plays fine music on instruments. They hear what you say, but they don't act on it. I could, I could be done preaching right now and say, that's the connect and that's the disconnect. Those people who connect and will hear the word of God and will do it will come out on the other side of the battle and they will be a victorious life. And I think for some people, church is almost like going to a concert, especially if the preacher is flashy and the music is great. They're not listening with a view to imbibe, imbibe or get God's truth and then put it into practice into their own lives. You see, we can hear the word and hear the word and hear the word, and it's God's truth, and I change not. His word is always the same. His word is eternal. This doesn't stop when Jesus comes back. It never ends. His word is eternal forever, always. It's his nature. It's his attribute. It's everything. And when he declares his word, we hear it, get it in our heart, we obey it, we're on the path of victory. I don't know how I can make it any other plainer than right here. If I hear it, and I'm like these people right here, and I don't do it, I'm on a road to shipwreck over on the bank. Simple as that. It's very, very simple. God makes it very simple as that. They are not listening with a view to imbibe God's truth in them. So what's the reason for the disconnect? What is it? People are pursuing something else in their hearts. And even as we sit here this morning, I dare say probably every one of us has a battle within our own heart. We probably do. I'm including myself. I'm pointing to myself here. What would I like to do? Where would I like to go? What do we do this? Am I, am I listening? Am I obeying God's word? Am I hearing God's word? And am I obeying it? And it talks about this all through the Bible. It talks about this. And, and in fact, in the book of Jeremiah, the prophet, it says 11 times, uh, it says the Lord was, uh, got up early and was calling out to the people. Calling out to the people. Come on, come on. Listen, 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 here, here, here. Now, people are pursuing something else, and they're now sure they're showing up at church, they're listening, and they're even saying amen at the right time, but they're not applying God's truth into their lives. Why? Because they're pursuing something else in their heart. They're pursuing something else in their heart. And now, we have a class, and I... And, uh, at Sean and Rita's on Thursday night, they're home. We have what we have a Hebrews class, and we have a we're auditing a, a college course of Hebrews. It's with Lanny Hubbard out of Portland Bible College, and anybody's welcome to come. I'm sure that I can make that available to Sean and Rita. We have about a dozen of us that are there, and it's excellent. You're welcome to come. And from that Hebrews class, it's on Thursday nights at uh, 6.15 at Sean and Rita's. If you want to go, you're welcome. But I'm going to take a little bit. This past Thursday night, as, as I was already studying this and knew what I want, the teacher there, Lanny, he said some things that, that I want to borrow for today, just a few things here. And it comes out of Hebrews 2.1. It says, therefore, we must give the more earnest heed to the things we have heard lest we drift away. Now, I've talked about this, and I've taught about this before. Let's give the more earnest heed. So we got to listen carefully. The New Living Translation says, so we must listen very carefully to the truth we have heard, or we may drift away from it. We have to listen carefully, or we'll drift away. This is the Word of God. Some of you, I'm even, I, I can even tell the vibe in here right now is you're struggling with what I'm saying right now because you don't want to give into it or you do want to give into it, but you really don't want to give into it. It's a struggle. It's a fight. Earnest heed in the Greek is used to describe a ship in a harbor that is carefully guided against all the currents that come against it. We have currents in life that are coming against us. And as we hear the word of God, and we've we're, we're got a hold of the, of the boat steering wheel, man. And I, anybody here been on the Columbia River where it meets the Pacific Ocean, Buoy 10? It's famous. 
You can go out on the ocean there, and there are shipwrecks all up and down the Oregon-Washington coast. And where the, the, the ocean comes in and meets the mighty Columbia River, man, it's turbulent waters. There are currents everywhere. And if you don't have a certain classification to, to, to ride a boat or drive a boat or sh sail a boat or whatever in that area, you're going to end up shipwrecked. You're going to get up on the rocks. Things are going to happen because there are twisted currents that will take hold of it. So you've got to take hold of it. You've got to listen to what's going on. And to get to the other side, to get out in the Pacific, it's quite a chore. It's not easy. I've done it a few times, and I was glad that I was with experienced skippers, good captains of ships and they, or boats, and they knew what they were doing because it was, it was turbulent. But right there at that time are some of the best salmon fishing in the world. And I caught a king salmon. It was a 40-pounder right there. And we had to back the boat up to chase the salmon because it was going, man. It was running. So we backed this cabin cruiser up, and I'm chasing. Finally, after a, an hour of battle, I hauled in that 40-pound fish. We ate good that night, fresh, fresh king salmon. It was good. But there are currents in life, and I bet you know what currents are affecting you today, that there's currents come against you, there's winds coming against you today. And I'm giving you the recipe of success out of the Bible, the Word of God. If you will do what it says, you will be successful in life. You will come out in victory on the other side. You may be in a current battle right now, and it could be all kinds of whatever, you will be victorious. So we have to be careful to guide the ship with intense focus. That's what this taking heed means. If we don't, we can end up shipwrecked on the rocks. My eyes are on the dock at the end of it, and whatever the truth of God's word says, I am going to do it. I'm going to do it. Now, I have discipled people and I've seen people, my, some of the dis people that I've discipled, they hear the word of God, they're seeing it, and they're saying, I'm applying that to my life. I'm going to do that. Their discipleship experience and their maturity in the Lord has gone up like this. And then I see people that I'm trying to disciple and says, are you doing the word? Are you obeying it? Are you doing it? And they'll, ah, well, you know, it's, I'll, let's save that for a later date or something like that. Or even Christians that have been Christians for a number of years. People that are coming into, to, from babehood into maturity, obeying the word of God, they're passing up Christians that have been Christians for 10 years. Why? Because they are obeying the word of God. They're hearing it and they are doing it. It's so simple. I'm telling you, if you do the word, you hear it and you do it, your life will be so much better. You're, you, we're all going through things. We all go through things. We'll, we'll go through things till Jesus comes back. We will. And how do I get through life? How do I get through the winds of doctrine that come against this earth? Winds of f f demonic force and nature, currents and all these things. I give earnest heed to what I hear, and I do it. Amen. Now, the writer to the Hebrews also describes this word, take heed, this definition as well. And I love this one. I love, this is the truth, too. I'd love, I'm going to take this to Teen Challenge and preach it to Teen Challenge. They've asked me to come down. It describes a drug addict trying to find their drug of choice. They're addicted to a particular drug, and they're going to do anything they can to get that particular drug. The word describes an addict so attached to the words of God that every waking hour is trying to figure out what God wants them to do. I'm addicted to the word of God. God's word is my drug of choice. I can't wait to get up in the, in the morning and get into the word of God. And I'll tell you what, that's what they teach at Teen Challenge, this very thing. Because when those young men, they tie into the Word of God. They get up early in the morning, and they're going to prayer. They're opening up the Bible. Their focus is turning from another drug into Jesus and His Word. 
and they refocus their lives from devastation into something that's pure and it's true and it brings victory into their lives. Awesome. True story. So I'm laying it out. It's so simple, but it's true. Ezekiel, God's word is their drug of choice. Now, Ezekiel said this, their mouths are full of lustful words and their hearts seek only after money. Paul the apostle describes this pursuit in 1 Timothy 6, through 9 through 11. Paul gives this critical insight to this in 1 Timothy 6, 9 through 11. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into many foolish and harmful lusts which drown men, drown men in destruction and perdition. Perdition means destruction. They drown in destruction. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil. It's the root of all kinds of evil for which some have strayed from the faith. Now, money's not evil. It's the, the love of money that's, that's the root of evil. Some have strayed from the faith. Their greediness pierced themselves through with many sorrows. Rich men have pierced them. Are you kidding, man? When you got money, you got it all. You don't have, no, it says rich men who love money have pierced themselves through with many sorrows. But you, O man of God, flee these things and pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, gentleness. So we per the, there's a pursuing here. There's something that's going on in our hearts. What are you pursuing in your heart? All right, strayed. And when they strayed, they're led away uh, from truth to error and backsliding it just doesn't happen overnight. When I see Christians that will backslide and, and walk away from God, it doesn't happen overnight. It comes in small little increments. It starts one little thing. It's over a period of time. And before we know it, and usually we don't know it when we backslide, we're, we don't know it. We start getting defensive and somebody say, hey, bro, hey, sister, uh, you know, maybe check this out. Where are you heading here? Hey, don't you bother me. Oh, man, that's an indication right there, just an attitude. That's an attitude right there that says something. I want you to notice, before Paul tells us to pursue righteousness, godliness, faith, love, patience, and gentleness, he says we first must flee from the love of money. Now, money can represent all kinds of things that we're, that we're divided within our heart. Money is just something. But it's possessions, it's coveting after something else. Now, covetousness, Paul describes covetousness, which is idolatry. He would say, well, I don't worship an idol. Well, what do you covet after? That's, that's an idol. What are you coveting? And that's what he's talking about here. And that's the division within our hearts that's taking place. And you have to be willing to flee the wrong things before you can pursue the right things because you can't go two directions at one time. You can. You can. So the great battle is in here. As you come in here to sit today, I promise you, I know, because I'm talking about myself. Do I worship God? Do I come in here? Do I worship? Do I choose to worship God? You know, I'd rather be, in my heart, I'd rather be thinking about what I want to do when I can get out of this place. I don't like being convicted. I don't like being this. I don't be like being that. I wanna, I'm only here because so-and-so invited me and I wanted to please them. My heart is divided. Money is just an example. If you're pursuing riches and gaining of wealth and the achievement, achievements of success have become your number one priority, pushing everything else, including God, to the side, then you're pursuing the wrong thing. You may be thinking, well, that's the great for some people, but that doesn't apply for me. And we all say that. Well, that's for them. That doesn't apply to me. You need to understand that you can be eaten up with the love of money and not have a dime in your pocket. It's interesting that Paul uses the word in this drown here. They are drowned. They, they drown men. This, these harmful lusts drown men in destruction and perdition. Now you need to understand what this is on this. This drowning here is an interesting word. Now, Jill and I, we lived in Battleground, Washington, southwest Washington. It's about 80 miles from the Pacific Ocean. 
and we would go to the Pacific Ocean quite a bit, and we'd have our barbecues out there and have a great big old fire pit. I built, I would, you know, there's logs all over the beach, and we'd build, a, you know, our little fort log houses, and then, and it'd keep us out of the wind, and then we'd have a big fire, and we'd go swimming out in it, come in and warm ourselves, and i have a little barbecue fire on the side, and i cook my chicken or whatever that's, that's on there. And we would go out there, and we'd go swimming in it and have a great time, and people would drown in the Pacific Ocean if you weren't careful. And Paul talks about this drowning with this. So why do people drown? Generally, people drown because, number one, they overestimate their abilities as a swimmer. They overestimate. I can, I can tantalize myself. I can tease myself, my flesh, into this certain little thing, this, this, and that. And I can handle it. I can deal with this, man. I'm, I'm cool. I, can, I got it under control here. I, you know, I'm good. Or they overestimate their abilities as a swimmer, or they underestimate the power of the ocean. They underestimate the power of the ocean. And here's a third one that I've, I've I, it's, really, it's really been something. They turn their back on the ocean. What happens? About every 20 minutes, a sneaker wave. Can you ever hear of a sneaker wave? Yeah, a sneaker wave comes in, their they're backs to it, they're laughing, they're having fun. Take my picture, look at me, and the wave comes up. Bam! They're flat on their face, and the wave is coming out, and they're going out in the ocean. They're getting sucked out because they weren't paying attention to what was going on. And that can be our lives. We can overestimate. We can, under, we can overestimate our ability. We can underestimate the power that we're up against. Or we can turn our back on it and ignore it and think, I'm cool. I've got it. If you overestimate your ability to be free from this type of temptation, or you underestimate the power of the type of temptation, you're setting yourself up for a disaster. We play with it. Flee the wrong thing, pursue the right, stay on course with God. Amen? Amen. That leads us all into what's, what I want to talk about. And we're going to talk here about I think it's important that as we go into courage, character, and commitment, I think this is what's going to be required coming into the days ahead. It's going to require courage in the days that we're going to come into. We've got to be a church that's courageous, a people of God that's courageous in the day of warfare and the day of battle. And some of us are, it's like this divide right here. We're in the valley of decision. And some of you today are in the valley of decision. It's a valley of decision. It's a valley of choices. And are you, am I going to obey the word of God, which I know is truth. I know it's what I'm supposed to do. It's, I know it's what God says. And, I, and, and, and not have that, that in the back of my mind, oh, this doesn't apply to me. A sneaker wave, you're turning your back to the word of God. And you're underestimating the power that's going to slam you, take you out in the ocean, and drown you. Just a word of warning up here. I want to show three. I love, I love character studies. Anybody do character studies? I, in the Bible, I, do, I did one on David. and We give a, a biblical uh, character study on the life of David. And it was, um, I love David. And today we're going to do Joshua. But I do also character studies. I just did one on William the Conqueror and the Battle of Hastings. And 1066 and when he invaded England and from Normandy. Uh, I love that. I love that stuff, you know. And then, and then some of you are going to call me a little bit nerdy here, but I don't care. But I just, I do, I like modern uh, character studies of people of modern times. And I just did one on the carpenters, okay? <laughs> I just did, yeah. And it was very, it was fad, it was really interesting to see Richard and Karen uh, what they did and how they came through life and uh, how they rose to success and what brought their downfall and all these things. And you, you, know, you learn from these things. And I learned from William the Conqueror and what his weaknesses and strengths and why he did this and all these sorts of things. But we're going to do one today on courage, and it's, the, it's Joshua. Joshua. And they, they heard the word of God these are three examples, Joshua, Samson, and Rizpah. And they heard the word of God, and either they connected with it or they disconnected with it. And they were in the valley of decision, the valley of choice. And those who connected with it in the valley of decision 
rose to success. Those who disconnected in the valley of decision, and they heard the word of God, they didn't connect, they ended up shipwreck. Their lives were a shipwreck, devastated. It's so simple. It's a lie, it's a it's yes or no. It's amen or I'm gonna turn my back on God. Simple as that. It's very simple. But I want to look at Joshua and courage today, and we'll look at Joshua 1, 1 to 2, and and uh, 6, 9. And it says, After the death of Moses, the Lord's servant, the the Lord spoke to Joshua, son of Nun, Moses' assistant. He said, Moses, my servant, is dead. Therefore, the time has come for you to lead these people, the Israelites, across the Jordan River into the land I am giving them. I promise you what I promised Moses. Wherever you set your foot, you will, you will be on land that I have given you. That's a promise from God. From the Negev wilderness to the, to the south of the Lebanon mountains to the north, from the Euphrates River to the east to the Mediterranean Sea in the west, including all the land of the Hittites, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you or abandon you. I would love to get a word from God. In fact, God has already given me that word right here. That's my word right there. That's your word right there. God says, I will not abandon you. I'm going to, whatever I have given you, wherever you put your foot at, I'm going to give it to you. Maybe you're in a business proposition or a business, and God's saying, I'm going to give this to you. You step out in faith and say, Lord, I'll take that. God says, by the way, I'm going to be with you in it. God, I take it for your word. I'm in it. Or I can cower in fear, never know the potential that God has placed within me, and never do what God has told me to do. Never become what it was. Valley of choice and decision right there. It says, be strong and courageous, for you are the one who will lead these people to possess all the land I swore to their ancestors. I would give them. Be strong and very courageous. Be careful to obey all the instruction Moses gave you. Do not deviate from them, turning either to the right or to the left. Then you will be successful in everything you do. And it says, study this book of instruction continually. Let this be your drug of choice. Study it continually. Let it speak to you. Repeat it. Memorize it. Get it in you. You need to get up in the morning. Get to it. Everything it's about it. Meditate on it day and night so you will be sure to obey everything in it. Only then, only then, will you prosper and succeed in all you do. This is my command. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Amen and amen. God told Joshua three times to have courage. Three times to have courage. That would make me a bit nervous because if God tells me that, I know there's something coming my way. Probably something up. Something's going to happen my way. Joshua had some very big shoes to fill because he was taking Moses' place. Moses had been larger than life. Probably, Moses is probably the greatest character of the Old Testament as far as the Hebrew people are concerned. Moses. And he's got a, some big shoes. Yet Moses had failed to bring the children of Israel into the promised land. Now Joshua was being given the same commission as Moses. And he had to do something. He had to obey the word of God. God put it out there, and there was a time where I am hearing what God is saying. Am I going to obey it? Am I going to do it? Am I going to do it? Joshua was being tasked with leading the children of Israel who had grown up listening to the complaints of the parents. They were listening. Now he's got a second generation, and they heard all the parents complaining about Pastor Moses. Oh, Pastor Moses doesn't do this right. Oh, Pastor Moses, if he did it my way. Oh, Pastor Moses, if he was just good at this. 
They were going to come up against walled cities and giants to conquer, and it was not going to be any small task by any means at all. And I'm telling you, the days are going to come. We're going to have walled cities, and we're going to have giants before us. And we're going to have to be courageous. We've kind of let, I, I sense that we've kind of let our guard down a little bit. We've kind of relaxed ourselves a little bit. And when you do that, watch out. Because God has giants before us in walled cities, and we're going to have to be courageous as a church. We've got, we got giants to conquer. This church has giants to conquer. We have walled cities to take. And we're going to be victorious. And we're going to be courageous because we hear the word of God and we do it. We've settled it in my heart. I'm going to do the word of God. We win. That's a winner. Maybe you're facing something huge right now. Maybe there's a history of failure in a life in your area, certain area right now. I tell you what, that can change right now just like that. If you'll determine in your heart to say, you know what, I've been defeated after time after time. I have a history, but I want things to change. You can change. God empowers you to change. God gives you a word of promise to change. You can do it. I want to tell you what God told Joshua here. Take courage. Joshua had some good reasons to be courageous, and so do we. Joshua 1.3, every place the sole of your foot will tread I have given it to you as I gave to Moses. Joshua had three things from the word given him. Promises. Well, number one, promises from God. This is what God gave him. And like Joshua, we should take courage because we have God's promise as well. And now I emphasize the promises of God a lot, but they are foundational to what we're going and what we're doing. We need to fall in love with what the Bible says and become intimately acquainted with God's promises. Now here's where a connect is in 2 Peter. Here's how we connect. 2 Peter 1, 3 through 4. By his divine power. You see, I can't do this in my own strength. I don't have the power to do this. I don't. If I, do, if I think I do, I fall flat on my face. So Peter tells us, by his divine power, God has given us everything we need for living a godly life. We have received all of this by coming to what? Know him. I've invited him into my life. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. And because of his glory and excellence, he has given us great and precious promises. These are the promises that enable you to share his divine nature and escape the world's corruption caused by human desires. Are you hearing what he's saying here? I can't do this in myself. So God says, I know you can't. I'm going to give you my divine nature. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. And when we receive Christ, the spirit of regeneration comes right in us immediately. My life should start changing. I should start bearing fruit eventually in my life. There should be something there. God's nature is the answer to whatever we have needs in life. The promise is like a pipeline. His nature, God, I need your nature. God, I can't do this. God says, I know I'm going to give you my promise, man. I'm going to give you my nature. I'm going to give you my Holy Spirit. I'm going to give you the Spirit. Now find a promise. We need to find a promise that covers this and stand on that promise. We ever hear the old thing, standing on the promises of God, the old song, the old, that old gospel song. I love that. The promise is what God's power will bring to your life. And this is the goal that we go after right here. The Bible declares, and it says, this is the goal that we go after. That's the Bible. And we need to stake our claim, and we need to refuse to be moved from the promises of God. There's a man, there's a story of James Marshall. He actually discovered, ever hear of James Marshall, another character study a guy went into, and I, I'm reading about him. He was at Sutter's Mill in 1848 and discovered gold. And when he discovered gold, it went around the world. How do you think California got big overnight? Gold. People from around the world were coming in by the thousands into that. And this James, uh, James Marshall died penniless, a penniless drunk. Why? He was the one who discovered gold. Do you think he would have had it all? It's because he never filed a claim. And people come in and push them off and file a claim right then and there. And if you want to be successful, 
file a claim on this because this is the precious gold that's forever. File a claim, stand on it, it's yours. And if you never file a claim, you're going to get pushed off and head to destruction. File a claim. Dig into his promises. David said this in Psalm 119, 127. Therefore, I love your commandments more than gold, yes, than fine gold. I love your commandments. Examine them like someone uh, going after gold examines the quartz and the gold veins that are running through it. I'm, I'm looking for the gold, the pan. Guy, that, that pan, man, I'm panning for gold. I'm looking for that gold. God said to Joshua 1, in, in Joshua 1, 8, God told him, it says, study this book of instruction continually. Meditate on it day and night so that you will be sure to obey everything written in it. Only then will you prosper and succeed in all you do. Do you want to be a success? You want to be a success in school, in business, in family life? I, you just go right down the list, right every line. You want to be successful. I've just told you how to do it. I've just told you how to do it. And if you will hear it and you will do it, that's the key. Valley of decision. Where's your heart at right now? If you will do it, you will be successful. I promise before the living God you will be successful because his word says you will be. You, your life can maybe be shipwrecked right now, a total wreck of everything, and you've come in here, man, I need something. You can make the choice and the decision today in this very instant and say, you know what, I'm tired of that former way of life. I'm going to change my life today, and I'm going to obey the word of God. I'm going to start doing it. And if you don't do it, it's on you. And I want to be careful with what I say here because I'm not doing it. It's very foolish not to, and, and the Bible declares you as being a fool. And you come to Pastor Bob and say, my life is a wreck, why? And I told, and, and, and this is why. Well, I don't want to do that. I can't help you. I can't help you. Make this word of God your drug of choice. It will give you direction. It will give you success. You will prosper. You will prosper. I promise you. Because he declares it. Not because I declare it. He promises success and prosperity. He just does. Because that's the way he is. Now I take the word of God and I read over it and I digest it and I speak it to myself and I declare it. I get into it. Get into the habit of doing this. It's a great habit. Get in the habit to do it. The Hebrew word for meditate literally means to mutter over and over again, and it has the idea of a cow chewing its cud just, just over and over and over and over again. I get the word into me. It's his promises. God was saying, Joshua, buddy, you need to take courage if you want to be successful. And you can have courage because I have given you promises and my promises, I will give you my nature, as Peter said. In my promises, you'll have my nature. If you chew on them and mine the gold out of them, uh, you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. I want to see everybody here in this building, everybody in this congregation have good success. I want to see you prosper in the ways of God. You will do it if you hear and you do. I hear the word of God, and I'm going to do it. Second, God's presence. We can take courage because we have God's presence. Sometimes the expert, the self-styled expert anyway, can give great advice from a distance and then tell you you're, you're on your own. You're out there on your own, leaving you to figure out things out on your own. You see, God's not like that. God says, I'm going to go with you. I'm going to give you my presence. I'm not going to just throw you out there into the, uh, and sink or swim or swim or die or whatever. He goes, I'm going to go with you. And just like he promised Joshua, I will go with you. I will go with you. Joshua 1.5, no one will be able to stand against you as long as you live, for I will be with you as I was with Moses. I will not fail you, and I will not abandon you. That's the word of the Lord. Well, God, I've, 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 felt, I've 
I've felt abandoned so many times. And I talk to people, and, and they've grown up, and they felt abandoned by parents or felt abandoned one way or another. Christ gives us the promise, I will not abandon you. I will not give up on you. God never gives up on us. He never abandons in any way. Verse 9, this is my command, be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or discouraged, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The Lord your God is with you wherever you go. You can look back at Exodus 33 when, when uh, Moses was supposed to take the people of God in and the people of God are worshiping at a golden calf and Moses gets upset with them. God gets upset with them and God says, I'm gonna, I'm, you can go on into the promised land. I'm not going. And God says, I'll send an angel with you. And, and Moses says, no, God... If you're not going into the promised land, I'm not going into the promised land. I'm not going without you. If your presence isn't with us, I'm not going. And that's been my, my heart's attitude, my thoughts, ever since we started pastoring this church. I'm not going, and I'm not going to pastor unless your presence is with me. And I cry out for the presence of God all the time. God, if you don't show up, we're nothing. And I just soon stand on the sidelines and let God do it. I throw in my little two cents every once in a while as a pastor. But I want the Holy Spirit to guide this church. And I, we need his presence to do so. And we need to be calling out for it, not just me. God, guide our church. We need the presence of the living God. We need you to go with us. We can't do this without you. We got to have God's presence Moses says, cancel my, pres my reservation to the promised land, God, if you're not with you. If you don't go, I'm out. God changed his mind. He says, okay, I'll go ahead and go. I think God liked that. I think God really liked that. God changed his mind. Okay, my presence will go with you. Moses says, okay, I'm in. Our attitude as a church should always be that way. Jesus in 20, uh, Matthew 28, 20 says to all the believers, I am with you always, even to the end of the age or into the end of the world. Jesus will never forsake you. He will never leave you. Take courage. Whatever you're facing right now, know that God is with you. He has not abandoned you. And you make the decision and the choice while you're in the valley of decision. God, I, I want to do this. Everything in me wants to do this, but I don't know how. Jesus comes alongside and says, I'll be with you. Yep, I'll be with you. I love the story of a, a reformer. You know what a reformer is back in the Middle Ages, and they, they brought in the word of God. They... Um, there was a reformer named Hugh Latimer, a famous preacher and theologian who was called to preach before King Henry VIII. Anybody know the history of King Henry VIII? Can anybody tell me? He had a couple of wives with their heads cut off. Scary dude. Scary dude. He meant business. He went and preached, and he preached a very bold and a very convicting and challenging message before King Henry VIII. And he was great, King Henry VIII was greatly offended by the word that was preached. He was called to come back the next week and apologize to the king, bow the knee and apologize. Hugh Latimer shows up before Henry VIII and the king of England, man, you just didn't mess with this guy. He went in and stood before Henry VIII and he said, I realize I stand in the presence of a king who could take my, away my life, but I also stand in the presence of one who is far greater than the king, and he can cast this man's soul into hell. I think he was indicting King Henry VIII. And it is him that I fear. Do you fear God, or do you fear man? Fear God more than man, and you will obey him, and you'll do what he says. Vladimir preached the very same sermon again with even greater boldness than the first time. He didn't back down. That was an awareness of the presence of God will do for you. When God's presence is with you, you can do great and mighty things, courageous things, bold things when God's presence is there. Later on, Latimer was burned at the stake for the accusation of heresy, burned him at the stake. His last words were this, we shall this day light such a candle by God's grace in England as I trust will never be put out. He declared his birth or his death 
as a light, a candlelight in England. And it was. And just like Joshua had the presence of God, you had the presence of God with you as well. Thirdly, God, remember God's previous works, the previous works. God's promises, God's presence, God's past works. God's past works. Joshua 1.12. Then Joshua, Joshua called together the tribes of Reuben. Gad and half tribe of Manasseh, and he told them, remember what Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you. The Lord your God is giving you a place of rest. And what it come down to, there was three tribes that wanted to stay on one side of the river, and the rest of the tribes wanted to go on the other side of the Jordan River, and they wanted to stay. And the other three tribes, they had promised to go with them, and the other tribes were upset with the three that, were, that had taken land on one side, and says, aren't you going with us? You, you promised. And they said, nope, we're going with you. We promised. We promised that we would go. And it talks about God's previous works in Deuteronomy 31, 3 and 4. And it says, but the Lord, your God himself, will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy the nations living there, and you will take possession of their land. Joshua will lead you across the river, just as the Lord promised. The Lord will destroy the nations living in the land just as he destroyed Sion and Og, the kings of the Amorites. Before they got to the promised land, they faced the Sion and Og before they had ever got there. God destroyed them. Moses was telling Joshua and all the people what God did on one side of the river, he will do on the other side of the river. You, don't, you need to reflect upon and remember upon what God has already done. I'm going to give you an opportunity here right now as a congregation of the Lord and in your boldness and courage of faith and say, God, my fear is of God greater than men. And I'm going to open up this right now and I want people to come up here. I'm kind of surprising you here, aren't I? But you're going to give the altar call. You guys are. I'm not the only one that gives altar calls. I want you to come up here and you declare what God has done for you in the past. Dear God, if we don't have one person come up here, what kind of a church do we have? You say, bless you, sister. All right, so for those of you who do not know me, my name is Sarah. Yep. Um, and I used to have something called celiac disease. And it is where your, uh, your intestines will rip each other apart if you have anything with gluten. It was very severe. It could cause cancer later in life. And one day someone was like, hey, who wants to get healed? And I was like, yo, I'm ready. <laughs> and I went up and I got healed. And it actually ended up causing a mass effect for a, a bunch of people to feel that they had yeah. faith, including my own sister who had the same thing as me, to go and feel that they got healed from it. And it was really incredible. And my thing in my heart is that like, if you want to get healed, I'm sure people would be able to pray over you. And that's just my mm -hmm. testimony. Yes, good. Thank you. Give to the next guy. Come on up, Toby. Come on up right here. Come on up. Stand right up here. So all of you know my story. Um, I came to this church for six years high, and uh, God has broken the chains of addiction over my life. Yeah. Yeah. And, and uh, he's restored my family. My, my oldest son is sitting here. And uh, f five years ago, we were a wreck, you know, both of us. He ended up in prison, and I ended up in rehab. And it's funny, the sermon that Bob gave today, I, I'm in the valley of decision today. You know, God has put in my heart to open a business, and, and I was struggling. But, you know, Bob's sermon spoke directly to me. And today I know that I, I'm in the position where I, if God's not by my side, I don't want to do it. You know, yeah. I've chased, my, t I've chased yeah. my tail way too much in this yeah. life, you know. And I ended up uh, broken, you know, spiritually as well. And, uh, yeah. I'm grateful for my wife. She supports me. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I just, I've just experienced restoration upon restoration upon restoration. Yeah. Um, I'm a product of everything that Bob's talking about. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Toby. Thank you. Come on up, Connie. Wow, there's so much I could say, but I know that God has brought me through healing upon healing upon healing over the last 10 years and it has been an amazing journey and he is in that business of healing mm -hmm. so if anyone needs it 
just ask and he is the father that gives abundantly more yes. than we could ever ask for. Yes. Thank you. Come on, Sean. Hey, church. Hi, Jill. Welcome back. Happy birthday, Joan. Um, what can I say? What, what hasn't God done for me? <clears throat> um, he has brought me through so much. I'd be dead without him, absolutely. Um, he has brought people into my life to change me. I don't know. Today, without God, I'm absolutely nothing. I mean, nothing makes sense without God. Right. Um, <clears throat> I'm just up here, nervous, broken. Yeah, great. I'm just broken before yeah, God. Yeah, good. Um, I try to live broken every day because <clears throat> that's what he wants. He wants a humble and broken heart. Yes. Um, he's, he's just brought me through so many things. Today I own a business. I have an incredible wife, an amazing church family. Yeah. Just support that, you know, I still battle things on a daily basis, but through him I'm victorious. Yeah. I'm righteous through him, his righteousness. Yeah. Praise God. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Stand out front. No, stand right here in the front, right in the middle. Oh, okay. Well, there's a lot I can say, but I'll try to just keep it short. Um, I had surgery three weeks ago, and um, the Lord is really doing a great job in me. I have not had the strongest health or body for the last few years, and so I'm really kind of surprised that I'm doing so good. Um, thank you, Lord. That's a real blessing. Um, the Lord always uses opportunities, you know, that are not so fun and not so, uh, well, they're just learning opportunities. So the last few months, this is my first surgery I've ever had the last few months before I knew I was going to have the surgery, at least the last few weeks. Um, the enemy was whispering things in my ear. And it was a training thing, but he would just go, well, you don't need to worry about plans after the surgery. You're not going to be around anyway. And basically, he told me in many different ways, I was not going to survive the surgery. Well, you know, every surgery is, you have to go through a certain amount. But this was not a major, major surgery, like brain surgery or heart surgery. But still, I was nervous. And by the way, thank you all for your prayers. Because when I went in, I had the peace of God all over me. And <laughs> it was just amazing. So God answered those prayers, and I'm also, like I said, doing very well. And very much alive. <laughs> very much alive. In fact, I feel better now than I did before, and this is really crazy. Um, this last year, I was also struggling with some fears, as a lot of people were, with COVID and all that. And I probably wore a mask longer than anybody ever in their lives, have, <laughs> but I finally took it off. Um, I was struggling with some fears because my immune system wasn't very good, and <laughs> this is kind of funny, but um, you know how we think we're really important sometimes. I told the Lord I didn't want to die because I have three, two out of three unsaved sons, and I just couldn't go to heaven until I see them saved. So he basically told me, put them on the altar, he'll take care of them. I go, okay. I go, well, I'm still not sure if I'm ready to die and go to heaven, Lord, because there's still some things I want to do, and I'm, I'm still struggling with this. I'm just not ready to go, so I don't want to get COVID, so I'm just going to kind of stay away and be safe, and I got it anyway, even wearing a mask, and it wasn't that bad, so <laughs> anyway, the Lord brought me through that, too. Um, yeah. Anyway, I just want to thank the Lord. Thank the Lord yeah. for his goodness and for every struggle he brings us through. There is a great lesson in it, yeah. and he has taught me more dependence on him, uh, how to be a little more brave, although I need to be a lot more brave still, and I keep praying about that. But he's just taught me... Um, oh, we've got somebody else. I better yeah. shut up. <laughs> he's just taught me really in this last year um, so much dependence on him, gratitude. It's just like, and just these last few weeks, it's just like I have this new thing welling up in, in me. I'm just like excited again. I'm not in fear anymore. I'm excited. And, woo! <laughs> Thank you, Lord. Good. Over here, over here. Over here. Over here. Center stage. Most of you know me. My name is Anselm Doucette or Andy. 
What God has done for me is he took a kid that had a heart that was encased in stone, I guess. I didn't care for people. I didn't really know how to express love. Um, I made a lot of bad decisions and hung around with a lot of very bad people. Served some time in the service. Almost got lost my life a couple of times in that. Uh, not because of war actions, unless you count float North Sea's North Korea war action. But it was a challenge. But you know, somewhere along the line, Jesus touched my heart, and that casing broke. And eventually, I found myself in a position to where I did care about people. And then I was surprised because I found that people cared about me. And then I found out that sometimes Good. God uses me to speak life into people. Good. And they listen. And yeah. it changed me. And then I meet this guy. And, you know, I really had issues with pastors, a lot of them, <laughs> and different religions that I was check testing and checking out. This man challenged me and loved me in a way that I didn't think that I could be loved by a pastor. He gave me opportunities to serve, and I've grown, and I've learned how to love unconditionally yeah. and accept people at face value. Good. And yeah. I know that I serve a living God. Every once in a while, there's challenges. They pop up, but every time there's a challenge, mm -hmm. it always is overcome. Amen. And there's always a lesson learned. Yes. yes. And I'm... That's what God has done for me. Thank Excellent. You. Yeah. Thank you. Hello. Uh, let's see. When I was 21, I had anxiety attacks really bad. Uh, it's hard to believe I'm up here today because this is totally this is against. This Luke Sullivan. He's been here since day one. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, over time, I, I, I came to realize that because of just anxiety, lack of faith, sin in my life that, you know, the natural consequence of that is anxiety, anxiety attacks. So I think it's in Psalm 119, verse 73, it says, it was good for me to be afflicted that I might learn your decrees. Yes. I, I, you know, it was a good breaking for me. It was very good. Good. Um, and I, if anybody in here has problem with anxiety, I have walked the walk from, you know, I couldn't leave my house or I phobias and all kinds of stuff and couldn't talk to people. I still struggle talking to people at times, but um, I just, it just took me years and years. Probably the thing that helped me the most was just memorizing scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Yes. You know, stuff like that. But, Greater is he that's in me than him that's in the Excellent. world. Excellent. I love it. I and, love it. Uh, Preach it. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. Excellent. In all Preach your ways, it. acknowledge him, and he shall make thy path I like straight. It. I like it. So Lord. anytime anxiety attacks me, even to this day, I still go back to those verses, and I stand on them. I take a step forward. Yeah. And uh, like you see, can see now, I'm shaking. I, I'm, not, I'm an anxious type person, but oh, yeah. my wife said you should say something. So I, I, I was asking God, should I say something? Should I, yeah. should I get up and yeah. say something? Yeah. And uh, so anyway, that's it. Good, excellent, good. Excellent, good. Come on, good. Oh, I just want to say um, I'm almost a year of being baptized in this church, and it's been the best year of my life because my health has gone above average for my labs. Um, I'm still having some medical issues, but not what I was two years ago. And I just thank God every day for my brothers and sisters in this church because they have showed me what God and love is. We love you. This is Seedy. Oh, wow. <laughs> I just sat back there and struggled, and the Lord said, you need to get up and say something. I struggled for the last year about fear, um, lack of self-confidence, and I prayed for God to take me out of a situation that was really bringing me down. And he did, not in the way I thought he would, but... <laughs> um, and I have been, for the first time in 20 years, um, on a job search. 
I haven't had to interview for a job in 20 something years. So this was quite a learning experience, but thank the Lord. He's given me a job that I think I'm going to be happy with. Thank you, um, and I am just thankful for this church who stood behind me and prayed with me, the ladies in the Bible study. <laughs> um, and he's just been so good, so good. Amen. And I thank you guys very much. You know, there are too many testimonies to go over all of them. <laughs> I had to pick one, see. Awesome. And uh, I remember coming home and having been saved and having the Holy Spirit with me and singing and enjoying the Lord in tongues. And I remember my mother who was saved and had been praying for me, and she was concerned. And then a few mornings later, the Lord says, I want you to go over and bow down when the sun comes up. I said, that's a very odd thing to ask me to do, Lord. He says, are you just going to do what I instruct you to do? Yes, Lord. So I did it. And then she came out and said, you're in some sort of cult or something. We need you out of here. And I said, you're saved. Would you know the truth if I took you to church with me? And she said, yes. So a week later, she was the one coming home, praising God and singing in tongues. <laughs> Pam Gregory. Um, this is going to be hard, but I think you, most of you know that I lost the love of my life, my best friend, almost a year ago. And because of the strength that the Lord has given me, the love of this church and my family, I cannot even begin to tell you how I'm able to get through this. I know there's times that I'm just really down, but I know God is right here with me. And there's so many precious people in here like Katie that was with him when he passed. It just means so much to me. Mm -hmm. But I do want to thank everybody for all the prayers and encouragement yes. you've given me. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Wow. Pam is precious. Uh, we lost her husband, Jack, on July 10th of 2020 uh, with COVID-related. And it's been a, she, they were married, wow, 40, 51 years. Wow. And um, he, I lost a, a, a best friend. Yeah. And uh, so it was really a, a hard one. But when I was talking about a reunion, I was thinking about Jack. <laughs> I'm looking forward to seeing him again. And we have that promise of the resurrection. Amen. Go ahead. Well, what I wanted to share with you today was uh, from my heart and what God showed me is, as I've read the word and come to understand what's in the word and seeing the people God used. You know, like Pastor was saying, God will qualify you for what he calls you to do. And you see Moses, he didn't think he was qualified, but look what God did through him. Uh -huh. and so I want to encourage you that, you know, you may think you don't measure up or yeah. you can do what, uh, you know, because of your past. The devil wants to remind you of your past, but God yeah. reminds you in his word of your future. Yeah. Yeah. And just remember that. And I just thank him for what he's done in my life and yeah. the work he's done to uh, mm -hmm. give me a, a, a tender heart and a soft heart because yeah. that wasn't me personally, that wasn't me in the flesh. And I thank him for my wife, who is a tangible reflection of his unconditional love that he, that he shows me and she shows me on a daily basis. Amen. I have so much to be thankful for. Thank you, Lord. Amen. I just want to tell everybody that um, how God... <clears throat> has blessed my life. Um, he has allowed me uh, and blessed me with being able to fellowship with people when I'm out and about. And it's just amazing how when God works through you, how he gives you the words to say, he, he helps you to express the joy of his love. And by fellowshipping with people in just a few kind words, how it has touched their hearts. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I've had the opportunity to just let God 
help me to bless them in his name. And it's just the little things like that that make a difference and can change people's hearts. Amen. And right. they, they also realize that God is true and that he answers their prayers. Yeah. Just by a simple act of faith mm -hmm. in wanting to serve God. It can be in just a, just a little way or a simple prayer for somebody. And it's just amazing how it'll touch and change their lives. Yeah. And I just, I just rejoice in how God has, has blessed me with that. And I'm looking forward to just a small amount of ministry for him. It's just, just a kind word to somebody, Good. everybody, that Good. it just it can change their lives. And, and we honor God. Amen. And we're doing what his will is. And we just... And I thank him for his grace, his patience with me, his love, and his forgiveness. Yeah, and that we gain our strength yeah. through our faith. Yes. Yep. So everybody that thinks their faith wavers sometimes, it happens to us all. Mm -hmm. yep. But his grace is sufficient. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we all just have to stand on that and trust in him. Mm -hmm. When the enemy tries to come against mm -hmm. us and say that it's not true, but the truth is in it's in the Lord. Mm -hmm. yes. Amen. Amen. That was Excellent. Very good. You know, if I could say that one thing here today is that Jesus wants to wrap his arms around you today. That's right. You've been going through it. God's love will never fail you. Amen. These people that came up, I just thank you for coming up. They are a testimony of the love of God. Yes. And his love never fails. And if he could wrap his arms around you, he would do it right now. And I wish we, I wish we could more and more. And we, group hug, yeah, right here. But thank you, church. I, I just want to say blessings to you. And thank you for the testimonies. Remember, uh, we're in the valley of decision. Make the choice true. Give it to God. You say, I'm having a difficult time with it. He will give you his nature. He will give you his spirit. He will give you the ability to make the right choice and decision. It's just a cooperation on your part. Do his word, and you will prosper, and you will have great success. He promises it, not me. He does. Amen? Let's end, let's end with a song here, and let's stand right now uh, before him and just declare his majesty with song here. You know, so many things our hearts has desired. Maybe when you were young, you had dreams or visions or you wanted to do this or be that. But you know, when we stand before Christ in eternity, the only the things that are done with him and for him will really matter at all. So if you're wondering if your life really matters and if it's gonna count, reevaluate where he is in the lineup of your life. And this thing, this is a prayer, Jesus, at the center of it all and ask him to help you to keep him at the center of your life. Go ahead and stand on a little forward if you don't mind. Jesus at the center of it all. Jesus at the center of it all.
to him <laughs> we really are we're, we're acknowledging him his goodness and his love and all those good things that God bestows upon us let me just pray and just bless you this that time that we go. father we thank you for the very word of God we thank you that you are the word and we declare your majesty this day we declare that you're a good God we know that you are we pray that you will go with every person here Lord that the presence of the living God will go with every person here they will sense it they will know you and that lord you will walk with them lord through this life lord and we pray that god that you will give us your promise that we will make lord even lord choices and decisions while we are in the valley of decisions and choices god and we will make correct ones and lord we will do the word we will hear it we will do it in jesus name amen